Veterans Day and Veterans Week, Helen is going to be playing a, a prelude that's a combination of all of the five songs that represent the armed forces. What we would ask is that if you uh, either served or you're the spouse of someone that served, when you hear that song from your uh, section of the armed services, will you please stand up and be recognized? So Helen, take it away.
now going to bring us a call to worship. It is Let Faith Arise by Jeremy Scott. Knock and the doors will open. Speak and the mountains will move. Anything we ask our God can do. Believe in the one who freed us. Trust in the one who hears us. Anything we ask our God can do. Let faith arise. Let faith arise. God is on our side. God is on our side. We'll overcome the battles won. Our Savior King. Our victory. join me in an opening prayer. Gracious God, you formed the world with your breath. You formed us from the dust of the earth. Now join us together in worship on this day. Let us celebrate our creation and the ways you speak to us. In the name of Jesus, we ask this. Amen. And now our praise team is going to bring you a song written by Janice Schostrand entitled Alabaster Box. She made her way to Jesus. She stumbled through the tears that made her blind. She felt such pain. Some spoke in anger, heard folks whisper, there's no place here for her kind. Still on she came through the shame flushed her face until at last she knelt before his feet and 
For those who are comfortably able, please stand for our prayer of confession. Great God, we come today in this place of holy ground. We bring with us many burning bushes. Some we have created on our own. Some have just happened to us as part of life. Sometimes we have listened to your voice, and sometimes we have not. Forgive us for not listening to you when we are on holy ground. Remind us to always have both our eyes and ears open to experience your presence. Now help us in forgiveness to go and sin no more. 
In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. The word forgive appears 95 times in the Bible. God forgives us, and we are to forgive one another. Jesus came to die for our sins, and he is the propitiation for all our sins. He took our place. May we rejoice in that God forgives our sins and brings us to a place of cleanliness to go and sin no more. This is the good news of salvation on this day. Amen. Please join us in singing the Gloria Patri. Please be seated. Our scripture reading comes from Exodus 3, 1, and also verses 11 through 29. Listen to the story about Moses and the burning bush. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the far side of the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in flames of fire from within a bush. Moses saw that though the bush was on fire, it did not burn up. So Moses thought, I will go over and see this strange sight. Why the bush does not burn up? And then we go on. But Moses said to God, Who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? And God said, I will be with you. And this will be the sign to you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God on this mountain. Moses said to God, Suppose I go to the Israelites and say to them, The God of your fathers has sent me to you, and they ask me, What is his name? Then what shall I tell them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. This is what you are to say to the Israelites. I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Say to the Israelites, The Lord, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever. The name you shall call me from generation to generation. Go, assemble the elders of Israel and say to them, The Lord, your, the God of your fathers, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, appeared to me and said, I have watched over you and have seen what has been done to you in Egypt. And I have promised to bring you up out of your misery in Egypt into the land of the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Perizzites, Hivites, and Jebusites, a land flowing with milk and honey. The elders of Israel will listen to you. Then you and the elders are to go to the king of Egypt and say to him, The Lord, the God of the Hebrews, has met with us. Let us take a three-day journey into the wilderness to offer sacrifices to the Lord your God. But I know that the king of Egypt will not let you go unless a mighty hand compels him. So I will stretch out my hand and strike the Egyptians with all the wonders that I will perform among them. After that, he will let you go. The Egyptians favorably disposed toward this people so that when you leave, you will not go empty-handed. Every woman is to ask her neighbor, and any woman living in her house for articles of silver and gold and for clothing which you will put on your sons and daughters and so you will plunder the Egyptians. May God bless the reading of God's word for us this day. Amen. 
And now our choir brings us an anthem written by Pamela Martin and Greg Courtney titled, Time for Turning. Will you pray with me? <clears throat> Lord, let now the words which come from my mouth and the meditation that falls on all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight and remind us today that you are our rock and our salvation. Amen. I want to share something with you this morning that has absolutely nothing to do with the sermon. I don't know if you know it or not, but the guy that invented the Ferris wheel never met the guy that invented the merry-go-round. And the reason why they never met was they traveled in different circles. <laughs> Sorry about that. <clears throat> so thinking of Moses, we all conjure up that vision of Charlton Heston, 
muscular, strong, bigger than life, parting the Red Sea and leading the people into the promised land. That's the vision of Moses we so oftentimes draw in our minds. But today we see Moses as simply someone taking care of sheep. Now there's a little bit of a backstory to get us to this place. In a nutshell, Moses was observing a fight and he gets involved in the fight and he winds up killing an Egyptian. To cover up his sin, he hides the body in the sand and then he becomes a fugitive. So he takes on a new profession as a shepherd, a smelly, dirty, hardworking shepherd. And in our story, he's taken the flock out to the back 40 for some grazing, and he sees a bush that's burning. Now, burning bushes were frequent in this area at this time. The daylight sun would beat down on these dry bushes and they would just suddenly explode and be consumed by fire. But most bushes, when they were burning, would be consumed by the fire and would eventually be nothing but ashes. This burning bush was different. It was not being consumed, which was pretty unusual and, yes, pretty much impossible. So Moses approaches the bush to get a better look, and then he hears the voice of God. Moses, take off your shoes for you're standing on holy ground. Now think about this. Moses is already smelly from being a shepherd, and God asks him to take off his shoes, something that I'm sure God would not want me to do in that situation. But he wants him to take off his shoes because he's standing on holy ground. And it's not holy ground because of what Moses did. It's not holy ground because some priest came along and said, bam, you're holy ground. It was holy ground because that's where the presence of God was at in that moment. And that's why when we talk about the church, And we talk about the church being holy ground. We talk about the presence of God in the ministry and mission and work of our church. God was present in the Bethlehem scene. That's what made that scene holy. God was present in the stable. God was present at the birth of the child. God was present at the crucifixion. God was present in the timbers and the nails and the spectators. That's why each one of these events take place on holy ground, because God is present with them. God sort of says to Moses, maybe I'll give you a foot rub, maybe a massage, Maybe you'll feel the warmth of my holy hands on your toes. Moses, you have a long road ahead of you. Let me give you some comfort as you relax. It's holy ground not because of what Moses did or was going to do. It's holy ground because that's where God was present. And that same lesson applies to us today. Wherever God is present, in essence, We are on holy ground. So then this burning bush starts to talk to Moses. And I guess the question is, what would you say to a burning bush that's talking to you? Well, Moses says, uh, first of all, Moses doesn't say anything. So God starts doing all of the talking. And he tells Moses that he wants him to go and lead the people out of their captivity. And Moses reacts like most people would react. Oh, you don't want me. I'm a stutterer. You want somebody that can talk really well. You want somebody that can share exactly what you want them to say. 
I, in fact, I even know somebody that could take my place. But God insists that he wants Moses to do this particular job. Moses, Moses throws out that line, I'm a stutterer. But in the end, God makes the point. And even though Moses leaves grumbling from this burning bush scene, he becomes the Charlton Heston of his time. And he does, in fact, lead the people. This was the conversation at the burning bush. If you faced a burning bush, what would your conversation be? God has a lot of jobs for us to do in the church. And oftentimes, God asks us to do various jobs. When we are in those situations, when we're confronted with a burning bush, are we going to turn God down? Are we going to come up with all sorts of excuses? Are we going to talk about why somebody else would do a better job than us? Edith Seville had a burning bush experience. She was born to be a missionary. She was born in 1914 to a missionary family, and they returned to the mission field in 1919 after a year-long furlough. She attended Westminster Presbyterian Church, where one Sunday they had an evening guest speaker as part of their challenge series. The guest speaker spoke about how Jesus was not the Son of God and how the resurrection was just a fairy tale. This infuriated Edith, and she decided that people needed to know the story of Jesus. People needed to know what salvation was all about. She would meet and marry Francis Schaeffer in 1935, so she would become Edith Schaefer. In 1948, the Presbyterian Board of Missions called her and her family to go to Middle Europe for a six-month trip that actually wound up being where they were for the rest of their lives. Now, she didn't want to go. She had a burning bush experience. God called her and her family to go do this mission work. And she didn't want to go. She gave God all sorts of reasons why she was not the right person. And yet God insisted. And God finally convinced her that that's where they would go. And so that's where they set up their mission work. And in May of 1955, Edith and her husband began a retreat center in Switzerland known as La Brie. The word in French means shelter. It's a place where students who were being persecuted for their Christian faith could go and be refreshed and renewed. Today, Labri exists in 11 countries, and Edith would find her way to heaven in 2013. She had a burning bush experience, and she spoke to God, and she complained that God was asking her to do something that she didn't want to do. But in the end, God won out, and everything became greater as a result of that. Do you have moments of burning bush in your life? Do you have moments when God confronts you about doing something or not doing something, and you want to give God all the reasons in the world why you can't do that? But in the end, God will have a plan and God will have a promise. The promise is to be with you as you execute the plan. That was the promise that God gave Moses in this burning bush scenario. Are you willing to listen to the voice of God? Are you willing to understand that God has a plan? Are you honestly willing to believe that God will walk with you in this plan? May you find the voice of God in the holiest of places, and may you always be willing to share with God your thoughts, but also be willing to listen to the voice of God. May it be so on this day. Amen and amen. Please join our praise team as we bring you a song titled, 
at the cross. Where mercy reigns and never dies There's a place where streams of grace flow deep and wide Where all the love I've ever found Comes like a flood, comes flowing down at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you, I'm in awe of you, where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I owe all to you, I owe all to you, Jesus. There's a place where sin and shame are powerless. my heart has peace with God and forgiveness where all the love I've ever found comes like a flood comes flowing down at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life. I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you. Where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you. I owe all holy ground here I bow down here I bow down here arms open wide here you save my life here I bow down here I bow at the cross at the cross I surrender my life I'm in awe of you, I'm in awe of you, where your love ran red and my sin washed white, I owe all to you, I owe all to you, at the cross, at the cross, I surrender my life, I'm in awe of you. I'm in awe of you, where your love ran red and my sin washed white. I owe all to you, 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 Jesus.
Let me share with you a few of our community sharing items. First of all, our cookie walk is coming up in just a few weeks. And guess what? We need cookies. We need cookies and candy. Now, I've been instructed to make this very clear. This is not a bake sale. So we don't need cakes or pies or things like that. We need cookies and candy. So please uh, help us out by bringing your baked goods up to the church by no later than Friday, December the 2nd. And we've been talking about this journey that we're going to be doing at the end of December. And in the bulletin and in the newsletter, you saw the breakdown of the three families that we've been asked to support. That first family is going to be a challenge. They have a lot of kids with a lot of needs. But this is something that touches my heart. I cannot bear the thought of a child going without a Christmas. So I want you to help us out by being a sponsor or by paying for an ad in the program. I am happy to announce that as of today, we have raised $1,285 so far for these families. I want you to know that I bought a full page of advertising. I'm not saying that to be bragging. I'm simply letting you know that I am fully invested in this program, and I hope you will do the same thing. We had several prayer cards turned in today. First of all, Janice Dawson wants to thank all of the veterans, and we certainly do appreciate and thank all of the veterans. Marilyn Rhodes is going to have replacement surgery, knee replacement surgery on Friday. So let's remember Marilyn. <clears throat> Sharon Bakari has asked us to remember Ashley, who's the mom, and Veronica, who's the daughter, who are really in need of some care and concern at this point in time. And I think we've announced this, but just to make sure, Robin Kinquist, who handles our children's program, husband was tragically killed in a car accident about three weeks ago. Uh, the memorial service will be, I believe, on the 19th at uh, John Calvin Presbyterian Church, and I'll be leading the memorial service. But that's why Robin has not been here for the past few weeks. Mary is here today. Understand that Mary is Robin's niece, so Stuart would have been her uncle. In fact, he was her only uncle. So let's be in remember, let's be in prayer and remembering for that family. And finally, Lucy, Lucy Calabrusco has some health issues and she's currently in the hospital. Will you pray with me this morning? Holy God, there are moments in our lives when we experience a burning bush. It's a holy place where you are present and you have words for us. Give us the ability to listen to your voice and to declare to you what is on our hearts. Sometimes you tell us things we don't want to hear, and sometimes we simply make excuses. So help us have open conversation with you. For those who refuse to even talk with you, speak to them in ways that they will understand but not realize that it's your voice. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have needs that seem to be overwhelming, bring them a sense of peace and a sense of hope. Lord, in your mercy. For those who have struggled with behaviors that have brought to them problems, lift those burdens and give them grace. Lord, in your mercy. For those who are veterans, thank you for their service and their dedication to our country and to our world. Help them celebrate what they did for us. Lord, in your mercy. And for those prayer concerns that were mentioned today 
and those that remain on our hearts. Listen to us now as we lift those up to you. Lord, in your mercy, now hear us as we pray together, as we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. C. Austin Miles was trained as a pharmacist. After he did a little pharmacisting for a while, he worked about 37 years in the gospel music publishing house called Hall Mac. He would also compose hundreds of songs for the church, the most famous being one he had a vision while he sat in his dark basement. He envisioned a garden where he would come and meet Jesus. That hymn, written in 1912, would become a traditional part of church music, the title being In the Garden. Please, for those who's, who are comfortably able to stand, please stand and let's join together in singing In the Garden.
is our Father, who is the Son, and who is the Holy Spirit, be and abide with you on this day and all days. And may you, any time you encounter a burning bush, know that you're standing on holy ground and listen to the voice of God. Amen. Thank you.